As my friend Ness once put it, Generation 3 was Pokemon's puberty. It was an experimental period, uh, making the transition between the early Pokemon style of Gens 1 and 2, and the modern style that really began with Generation 4 and continues to develop. And that experimentation had a lot of great results, but it also had a number of flops and just weird choices. But we'll save those for next time, because today we'll talk about some of the best designs of Generation 3. Let's begin with a family that includes what was my favorite Pokemon for several years. Ninkata, Ninjask, and the one that brings it all together, Shedinja. Altogether, they are a fantastic execution of their concept. You probably already know a lot of this, but this family is based on cicadas. Ninkata is a cicada nymph, which live underground for several years. The ninja connection there is really interesting because when the cicadas emerge, when the nymphs all crawl out of the ground at the same time, they come as a surprise to their predators. They're sneaky little things. When Ninkata is ready to evolve, it sheds its outer shell and emerges a ninjask, a bug so fast you can hardly see it. But that shed shell is where it really gets interesting. Lots of bugs molt, but cicada shells are the only ones that you're likely to find in one piece. So Ninkata is the only Pokemon that leaves behind enough of its shell to create a whole separate Pokemon. And those husks look like living cicadas too, so in a way they act like decoys, which again plays into the ninja theme, since ninjas sometimes use decoys to make their escape. And Shedinja, being this empty, lifeless shell, also brings in this death theme, or rather a guardian angel theme with the Halo and the Wonder Guard ability. It just works so well together. Blaziken is another very well-executed concept. A cockfighting Pokemon could have been pretty bad. Honestly, just look at Combusken. But when it fully evolves, it becomes this sleek fighter that is very human-like while still looking pretty obviously like a bird. And I think that's part of what makes Blaziken so successful. If the design had focused more on the chicken elements, it could have looked pretty bad. I mean, Blaziken is partly based on Shamo chickens, a Japanese cockfighting breed, but can you imagine Blaziken with those proportions? Instead, they made it a more humanoid fighter, which makes it a little bit more familiar, and that's just the kind of design that appeals to a wide audience. Oh, Absol, so beautiful, so misunderstood. Absol is not very clearly based on any particular animal or mythical being, which really makes it stand out. It's a bit feline, sure, and it does have a bit of Baitse or the Sphinx in it, but you don't really look at Absol and think Sphinx. Absol is just Absol. Its design is also very balanced. The head is obviously a Taijutu, the yin-yang symbol, but it goes deeper than that. It's both white and black, and soft and sharp, and in its lore too, it's a benevolent Pokemon, but it's feared. Absol just has this wonderful mystique about it. If there's any fault with it at all, it's that Mega Absol wasn't a proper evolution instead. Gen 3 introduced a lot of legendary Pokemon, and most of them are meh at best. But Jirachi is a saving grace, and if you watch the first episode in this series, you might know why. Like Cubone, Jirachi embodies the three pillars of Pokemon creature design. Its tiny limbs, huge head, and beady eyes make it very cute. And the shooting star design of its helmet and cape give it a really unexpected and kind of cool spaceman look. The mystery of it comes from the Tanabata strips on its head, but mostly from that U-shape on its belly. That is the third eye that it almost never opens. Off the top of your head, do you know the color of Jirachi's third eye? Didn't think so. The inspirations behind Trapinch, Vibrava, and Flygon have been covered pretty extensively, but I feel like I need to mention them here because they are the most successful designs of the entire generation. For those who don't know, this family is based on antlions, a desert insect where the larva hides inside a sand pit and catches its prey with its giant jaws. And when it metamorphoses into the adult stage, it looks almost identical to a dragonfly. Game Freak just took the extra step and made them into actual dragons. And this bug dragon just works so well. It's got all of the features you'd expect from a western dragon, but it still looks like a bug. The bug eye goggles work particularly well, and it's just no surprise that Flygon remains a fan favorite to this day. There's a lot of other Pokemon in Gen 3 that I think have successful designs, but these are just the ones that really stand out. But you know the drill. 
Let me know in the comments below which ones you think were the best designs of Gen 3. Next time, we'll talk about the worst designs of Gen 3, and, um, well, there's a lot to choose from. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video if you're enjoying my content. I'm Umbria and Libris, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Let's do one more take, just as a safety net. Yes. We all know what happens when you don't have a safety net. You fall in parish. You get Robin. <laughs>